glory to his name. He's a wonderful God. He's faithful. He shows up all the time. And I know you love him. I love him. I'm telling you, he's a lovable God. He loved us when we were in our ugliness. He loved us in our sin. He loved us when we didn't even know how to love ourselves. So I'm just grateful to be here. Uh, you would not believe what I was doing before uh, this prayer service. I tell you, there are, there are certain things that uh, property managers have to do that uh, we just don't talk about. But I was chasing rodents and <laughs> back at my desk again, uh, uh, like it's, it's in the past. But that, that's a story to tell and I'm definitely going to incorporate it uh, as soon as the Lord gives me a word about chasing rodents. <laughs> so let's begin. I'm glad to uh, hear all of your voices and you all gathered here today and um, you are a blessing to me. Those of you who listen uh, on and you stop what you're doing in the middle of the day to hear a word from the Lord, uh, those that seek him will find him, knock, the door shall be open. And I just believe that God hears our cries and attends unto our prayer. Uh, today we have another uh, special guest uh, in, in the uh, word of God that we're going to visit today. And her name is, this one actually has a name. Uh, last week we talked about the lady that uh, was 18 years bent over. But today we're going to talk about someone that they actually mentioned her name in the word found in Acts chapter 9, 36 through 42. And we're going to invite our guest, Tabitha, uh, on the line. And uh, she's out of uh, Elida, a place near uh, Joppa. So if you turned in your Bibles to Acts chapter 9, verse 36 to 42, and I'm not sure which translation I put in here, but uh, verse 36 says, Now there was, a, there was at Joppa a certain disciple by the name of Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And for as much as Lydell was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them, and when he had come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows uh, stood by him weeping and showing the coats and the garments uh, which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning him to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up, and he gave her his hand, and lift, there we go, the laying on of hands again. He, he, he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and the widows, presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Um, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Uh, I, I found this song. Let me see if I can bring it up on here real quick because this kind of summarizes kind of summarizes what what she's talking about it says may the work have done speak for me may the work have done speak for me when I'm resting in my grave, there is nothing that can be said. May the work I've done speak for me. I know y'all know that song. May the service yes, I yes. give, yes, 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 speak for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My grandmother used to, to, to sing that song, May the Work I've Done Speak for Me. And when I think about this woman by the name 
of Tabitha, uh, the disciple, uh, Dorcas. Uh, it, it was Dorcas, I think, in the Hebrew and Tabitha in the Greek. And they made mention uh, of both of her names. But when I think of her, that's the song that comes to my mind. May the work I've done speak for me. Uh, I think the chorus goes down uh, to um, la, 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 la. The, the when I'm resting, when the best I try to live, my mistakes he will forgive. May the life I live speak for me. Uh, and I, I just, I just, I just, I know we're not saved by works. I want to make that clear. We're, we're not saved by works, but people who love the Lord and people who are believers, people who are disciples like Tabitha, like Dorcas, um, you can't help but to do good works. And I'm not saying your gift is Dorcas's gift because we're going to talk about what she did. But whatever it is, you find your hands to do. Whatever creative gift that God has given you because he's given us all something to work with. He's given us something. You may be uh, a person that does poetry. You may be someone who, who is just good at cleaning a house. I mean, you know how to get behind the couch, in the cushions, uh, uh, down into the uh, gas stove, and you, you know how to do all of that. That's a gift. Everybody doesn't have the gift of cleaning. The gifts of helps are necessary in, in the church, and we kind of look differently at them and we want we want to preach we want to pastor we want to sing we want to you know we want to have all the glamorous gifts but the 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 gifts of help is necessary in the bible and i'm going to show you how necessary and needful they were because it says in joppa there was a, a certain disciple first of all we have to understand she was a disciple okay disciples weren't all men Okay, they were, they were men and women that followed the teaching of Christ. They followed the teaching of Christ and they worked that thing out uh, from the beginning until the end. And, and in her discipling, in her following of Christ, she found something that she was good at. This woman, it says, was full of good works and alms deeds. Now, alms deeds means alms uh, means what you give to the poor. Okay, so sometimes we get that mixed up with um, just our regular giving. But he, he talks about in the word about our tithes, our offerings, and our alms. So our alms are what we give to the poor. Hopefully I'm, I'm making this plain enough for you. But she was a woman good, full of good works and all alms deeds. So she not only did good works around her community for those that could probably help themselves, but she also um, worked for the poor. She did things for the poor, specifically for the poor. And later on, we're gonna find out how she even helped the widows. We don't know a whole lot about Tabitha, but what we do know is that she was a woman that trusted uh, followed Christ and that she also did great works. Tabitha, actually, the word Tabitha means gazelle. And we know when we think about a gazelle, a gazelle to me is a swift, um, uh, uh, athletic uh, type ballerina <laughs> type animal. Uh, they're graceful. They they move with grace. And I've met some beautiful ladies who just move with grace. And no matter what they do, uh, whatever they do, whether they're in the kitchen uh, cooking or whether they're they're just ushering at the door, they have that grace. You know them them women. They got that grace and they move. They just they move. Whether they're in jeans, they move swiftly and uh, uh, with. Uh, a lot of femininity, even when they're in, in long skirts or, or jeans or their jogging suit. They just have an air about them. This woman had an air about her um, that she was named after a gazelle and she was full of good works. And it came to pass, the Bible says, that uh, I, 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 we don't know how old she was. We don't know. We don't know any of that. Um, but we know that the Bible says that she became sick. Now, I know this is a very sensitive subject at this time because so many people have lost so many people. I, I, 
I, you know, you see the statistics on the news uh, and they talk about the news uh, deaths due to COVID and uh, how, what the numbers are. But when you start hearing people that you actually relate to, that you talk to, um, hearing them going through, it's like, uh, I know so many people that know so many people that have passed away in this season, in this last few years. So I know that this is a very sensitive subject, yet uh, sometimes Jesus needs us to visit the sensitive things. We need to visit the things that make us hurt and we need to address them and we need to uh, expose them to air so that they can heal. And so she was sick. Now, now I don't know any of you, um, I know some of you that have dealt with your loved ones and your friends and you were there the entire time when they were sick. And while they were sick, what were you doing? You were, you were praying, you were attending to them, you were maybe weeping a little bit, but, but but we were praying we had hope we had hope that they were going to come through this you're going to make it you're going to you're going to uh, oh you, this is going to be a testimony you're going to be all right remember i told you the story um uh, several weeks ago when we talked about the elect lady and our first lady actually uh uh, uh the jill biden and how she had given up hope on god when she watched her bonus son die uh, she said she prayed for him every day every day and she believed every day he was just gonna she believed until the time he closed his eyes for the last time and then she got disappointed with god i'm here to tell you all um we we god has a purpose for everything under the sun uh it, it's not personal it's nothing that you did it's not that you're Faith wasn't strong enough. It's not that he did not hear your cry, but he has a purpose for everything under the sun. There is a time to be born. There's a time to die. There's a time to love. There's a time to hate. You know, there's a time to build up. There's a time to tear down. There's a season in everyone's life that we come to this place. Um, uh, uh, some of, some, we've, we've, we've known people that have died suddenly, suddenly uh, like my son. Uh, you know, I didn't get a chance to hug him. I didn't get a chance to speak to him. I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. And, and, and But this story is about these, these people had gathered around this woman and had just uh, rallied around her. And, and listen, you know when you're loved because people don't really like to hang out with sick people who've been sick for a long time. You know, they may start out good bringing you soup and sending flowers, but then week one comes and week two comes, she's still laying there in the bed. And by the, by the end of the month, you know who really, really um, is thinking about you because they're still there. These, these, she had affected um, all these people in this town. How have you affected the people that surround you? How have you affected? Affected the people that know you um, by your works because they can't always uh, understand uh, your love of Christ and you love them because of Christ, but uh, they can see your good works. Uh, they can see what you do. It's more about what you do than what you say. Uh -huh. we, we talk a, a good game. I'll be praying for you. And how many have walked away from a conversation like that and forgot to pray for that person. That's why it's always good to say, hey, listen, let's pray right now. Let's let's pray right now because tomorrow I, may, I might not remember by tonight. I don't know what's going to happen in my life. Let's pray right now. And these people prayed and they stayed around her and they, they cried and they, uh, but finally, Finally, how many times have you nursed something that has been sick? How many times have you nursed something that you just had hope? This is going to work. This is going to work. I'm going to keep on administering all the things that I need to administer. That thing that just got sick, that it doesn't have to be a person. Hear me. It doesn't have to be a person. There, there are some things, relationships that just get sick and you just keep trying to apply things to it to make it happen. There are, there are jobs that, that that have just gotten sick attitudes, things that have gotten sick in your life. Um, but here, this woman was sick and they watched her sick, sick, and they prayed and prayed that she would come through, but she didn't. She died. She, she did. She did die. Uh, um, and um, 
some of the people that you have a uh, uh, relationship with have passed. We have some people on our list today that are struggling uh, with bereavement. They're struggling in their grief uh, concerning something that they had hoped that God would, would allow to pass them by. But nevertheless, it came to the day when they had to say ashes to ashes and dust to dust when they closed, their, their loved one closed their, their eyes for the last time. And, and so they were stayed. They, uh, they did what they knew how to do. They they washed this woman, and I just believe that they had to, they, they, with all tenderness and with all, all love, and uh, they washed her, and then they laid her in the upper tomb, the, in the upper chamber, uh, which reminds me when Jesus, before his death, he went up to the upper room. There's something about being in the upper room where it's quiet. Let's 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 put put this thing and take it to the to the highest height, take it to the place uh, where we can where it can be quiet and 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 God can do with it whatever. Where have you taken your sick stuff? Where have you taken the things that you have lost? Have you taken it to a higher place? Have you taken it to a place and laid it where 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 God will have to deal with it? Well, God will have to deal with your 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 emotions concerning it. Have you taken it and laid it before the Father? They took the body and they laid it up in the upper room and and uh uh uh, 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 I, I just want to know where where have some of you taken your stuff and you have literally given up on hope. It reminds me of when uh, Lazarus died uh, and Mary and Martha had given up on Lazarus and he had been sick and and Jesus didn't show up. He didn't he didn't show up when they prayed. He didn't show up in the sick room. He didn't show up. Uh, 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 at, at, at the wake. He just didn't show up. Jesus didn't show up and they were angry. And some people, because we feel that Jesus didn't show up, we're angry. Uh, we don't know how to deal with our emotions. Uh, I'm here to tell you, take that emotion, take that thing, take that thing that you laid down and take it to the upper chamber and lay it before the Lord. And while uh, the body was up there, they had heard that Peter, you remember Peter cursing Peter, uh, Peter with the bad mouth, Peter that would fight anybody for Jesus, Peter that was going to cut off the ear of the soldier, that did cut off the ear of the soldier, and Jesus had to put him back. You know, we all need a Peter sometime in our life. And Peter had his own testimony after Jesus had had left and was crucified and risen again. They said, hey, G uh, Peter is over in the next town. Get the word to Peter. Get the word to Jesus. Get the word to God. Get the word to the master. Get the word to the prophet. Get the word to those that can help. Send the disciples um, to catch a hold of Peter and send for him and tell him, we need to hurry up. We need him to hurry up. Anybody got something going on right now? And I just need Jesus to hurry up. I need him to get here right now, yesterday, sooner than soon. I'm about to pass out. I'm about to throw in the towel. I'm about to give up. I, I need Jesus here. Send for Peter and tell Peter to get here right now. And Peter got up immediately and went with them. And when he had come and brought them to the upper chamber, chambers, it says the widows. All the widows was gathered around. You know, back in the Bible, uh, they used to say, bring forth the uh, wailing women. Bring forth the wailing women. Because when somebody died back there, it was okay to, to be dramatic. It was okay to let it all go. Now, they would rip their clothes. They would, they would put ashes all over them. And they would holler. They would wail. The Bible calls it wailing. Uh, now, we have to be so strong for everybody that... That, that, that uh, you know, it, that if I wail too loud, people may think that, that I don't believe that God uh, can deliver me from this bereavement. But back in the Old Testament, oh my God, they used to holler. They used to holler and throw themselves down on their faces. I had an aunt called Aunt Mutt, y'all. And Aunt Mutt showed up at every funeral back then. Anybody got an Aunt Mutt? Somebody like that? And I remember when my grandmother passed and other funerals that had to do with that side of the family, Aunt Mutt would be on the front row. And we would always know when Aunt Mutt was in the room, she would just start hollering, oh, 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 
and we just thought she was being dramatic. But the, the truth of the matter is, is Aunt Mud, she was just letting her feelings flow. Uh, uh, she didn't wait till she got before a corner. She wanted everybody to know, I'm sad. This breaks my heart. I'm hurting. I'm hurting. I'm going to miss whoever is laying there in front of her. They used to wail. She used to wail. Aunt Mutt was known for being a wailing woman. This, this widow, where these widows wailed and they were weeping. And they, as soon as Peter showed up, they started saying, look, look what she did. Look at all this. Look at, she hand sewed us garments. She hand sewed us. Listen, some of y'all got sewing machines and that's like, um, uh, I think that's a, a lost art also that people make their own clothes with their sewing machines. But imagine hand stitching um, garments for people. And, and, and before you got halfway done with one, somebody else was asking, can I have one in red? Uh, can I have one in purple? Can I have one in green? Um, can I have two? Can and I have three. You know, my kids don't have anything because she just wanted to help everybody. Uh, the, and, and, the, and the evidence of it was there were all these people that just was falling apart when she passed. You know, some of you I know have imagined your, what will my funeral be like? What will my home going be like? How many people will be there? What will they say? Will anybody be able to say something good about me? May the work I've done speak for me. I expect people to show up. I ain't been the best Christ, Christian 100% of the time, but when I give, I give from my heart. When I do, I do it for the best that I can. I give to the best of my ability, and I know a lot of you women on here, you are amazing. You're amazing women with great deeds. I don't know how you do what you do when you do it, but you remind me, some of you on this line, remind me of talent. Tabitha, you remind me of Dorcas, um, and, and, and they just cried, and look at what she did, look, do you remember that recipe she gave me, she used to bring me homemade bread all the time, look at this, she gave me this little plaque to go on my wall, this woman, she brought me little tiny plates, I have these little plates that uh, one of my older cousins gave me, and I, we use them every day, she's been gone for over 10 years, and we use those plates every day, Every day we pull one of them out and use them. And it's a memorial to what she did. I don't know why she gave them to us. I'm just grateful she did. It makes me remember her all the time. Um, but 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 they mourned and they grieved over this woman and they showed they had evidence of her good works. Where's the evidence of your good works? Where is the evidence? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. What? It doesn't say in the word of the Lord. It says in the work of the Lord. Uh, in the work, uh, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that, that, that your labor, hear me, somebody needs to know this today, that your labor has not been in vain in the Lord. It is not, people may not have patted you on your back. Uh, sometimes people don't give your roses while you can yet smell them. Uh, but nevertheless, um, you have done a good work. Um, well done, my sisters on this line. Uh, well done, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been great. And so Peter comes um, and he sends them all out of the room. He sends them all away. Um, and then he gets down and he kneels and he begins to pray. And turning to the body, uh, he said, I come to tell somebody today, um, Tabitha, get up. You feel like you have died. You feel like your hope is gone. Um, I come to speak to one of you sisters today. And I come to say, Tabitha, get up, get up, get up, get up. Arise, daughter, arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is upon you. I said, arise, my daughter, arise, and, and, and know that God's light is upon you. I don't know what you may be going through or what you've been through in the past, um, uh, but I am saying to someone in the spirit in the name of Jesus. I speak to that dead place. Um, I speak to
to that depressed system. I speak to that depressed, whatever you oppress, depress, suppress. Um, and I say, get up, get up, get up, arise. I'm, uh, I'm not there to take you by the hand. Uh, but Peter took her by the hand and uh, uh, sister girl sat up. Um, uh, and he lifted her up. Um, and then he called for the saints. Um, he called for the widows um, and presented her alive. Um, uh, and it was known throughout all of Joppa. Um, and they many believed in the Lord. Um, listen, somebody is out there looking for hope. Um, somebody is looking for a miracle. Um, they are looking for a testimony that only you could give. Um, so Tabitha, you got to get up. Um, you got to get up, sister. Um, you got to get up, lady. Um, you got to, got to, got to, got to get up. Um, somebody's looking for you to get up. Um, get up and get out. Um, and show what the magnificent hand of the Lord has done for you. I bless God for Tabitha. I bless God for Dorcas. I bless God for Peter. But I bless God today on this line, ladies. I bless God for you. I bless God for you. At the other end of this line, keep on doing what you do. And know that God, hallelujah, has been, he has been attentive unto your cry. He's been attentive unto your prayer. I love you so much, <laughs> but he loves you so much more. Thank you for listening. I appreciate you. Bless God. Bless God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for every Tabitha that is on this line, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that all of those ladies that have sacrificed time, they have sacrificed their gifts, they have sacrificed their money, they have sacrificed words of wisdom, they have sacrificed for the good of them that are struggling around them. I thank you, Lord God, for every Tabitha and Dorcas that is on this line, oh God. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. I thank you, and as Sister Jillian said, I am grateful, grateful, grateful. Hallelujah. Lord, you're a great God. You're an awesome God. We thank you for visiting us on here to, on today. And Lord God, I speak right now even to the dead things, and I ask that you raise hope on today, Lord God, that, that somebody listening is dealing with some dead issues, Lord God, or things that need resuscitation, and I ask that you resuscitate. Lord God, we pray for those that his names have been called out by them that, that, that love the Lord. We pray and uh, for the Copeland family, Lord, who has dealt with a tragic death, Lord God. I pray, oh God, that a miracle be seen in the midst of it, that someone gets saved, oh God, uh, that somebody changes their life in the midst of their pain, that someone is restored back to the kingdom because of this. God, do not allow any of this to be in vain. We pray, Lord God, for the salvation of Sister Matthew's family, Lord God. We ask that you, uh, that you, that you draw them 
them in by the precious Holy Ghost. Um, we pull on the Holy Ghost even right now, Lord God, to speak to them wherever they are, even as we speak right now, Lord God. We pray for grandson Connor Miller, Lord God, and, and Jordan uh, Cooper, Lord God, and we ask that you do with them what you would have. Let your will be done, oh God. Ah, Lord, let your will be done, Lord God, in both of their lives, Lord God. We pray for um, uh, Sister Estelle Graham's family, Lord God. We thank you for keeping her for 87 years, Lord God. How you allowed her to celebrate one more year, Lord God. Um, and, and we pray for her family, Lord God, that, that, that something will be taken away from a legacy from her life. That, Lord God, people will learn how to treat others and, and, and love the Lord. And, and, Lord God, we pray for Sister Annie, Lord God, and her sister and their family, Lord God, the ankle of the young lady, Lord God. We ask that you straighten up the ankle, give it a quick, speedy recovery, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for those that have gotten the vaccine, that, Lord God, that they would do, the vaccine would do what it's supposed to do. God, in Jesus' name, and heal her entire family. We pray for our leaders, God, that, that are in making major decisions, Lord God, on our behalf and on behalf of this country. Lord God, we pray pray for them and we pray for the teachers on the front line, Lord Jesus, that you would give them, Lord God, uh, what it takes, that they would they would have patience even in teaching the children that they do have, Lord God, that, 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 that you would cover them with your blood, Lord God, and Lord God, all the other people that are on the, the, the list today that we have in our hearts, Lord, we lift them up to you in the name of Jesus, Lord God, allow those that are unsaved to be saved, Lord God, allow those that are, that are in trend in, in, in sickness, Lord God, to be uh, uh, healed and delivered and set free, God, in the name of Jesus. And allow us, allow us that are on this line to be uh, the hands of God, uh, uh, God's love expressed in the earth. Allow them to see our light so shine, Lord God, through the works that we do, oh God, that men will see uh, the good works and glorify you. Lord God, that's what we want. We don't want the perfume. We don't want to, to, to take any of the glory from you, but it is because of you that we're able to do what we do. It's the grace that you have put on our lives, oh God, that we're able to do what we do. It is it is the favor that you have given us, opened up doors, Lord, that we can help other people. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, and those that are on the line that have not discovered yet uh, what their gift are, Lord God. I ask that this week, that it be the week that they discover what you have given to them specifically to to work in this season, in this COVID time, in this pandemic time. Lord God, at least it, it, allow the entrepreneur to rise up in all of us, God. And I promise, I promise, Lord, we're going to give you the glory at the end of the story. We thank you for listening. In Jesus' matchless, mighty name, we pray. And if you all agree, say amen, amen, amen. Amen. Amen.